And if at any point I get choppy or anything like that, please just um, uh, type into the chat or unmute yourself and just let me know. And then if uh, you have a question or if you remember like, oh, I missed number 16 or something like that, put that in the chat and that way I make sure I address it. Um, and we'll just kind of go forward. So from what I understand, it was the flow rate questions, the weight based questions. Um, what was the other thing that she said? And then maybe even marking on the syringes that gave you guys some challenge. Oh, it looks like you have a heparin protocol as well. Okay, so let's take a look here. So this is your, um, this is the test that I was given it's blank. I don't have a key or anything for it, but we'll work through it. Um, just off, off of looking at this, um, one through four, any of those that you need to see, any of those that you feel like you missed or not sure why you missed, any questions about rounding? Were we supposed to round on those? Because it doesn't really clarify. Okay, well, and that's a very good question. So it depends. So when you go from pounds to kilograms, round to the nearest tenth, um, but typically you won't have to do that when you go from milliliters to ounces. Um, maybe from teaspoons to milliliters, you might need to round, and then you do not round basic unit conversions. So if you're staying within the same metric system, so micrograms to milligrams, you don't round those answers. So like this, this answer would be 0 0.125. And I know it's difficult to see this, but um, it says 125 micrograms to milligrams. Um, and so uh, you would just move the decimal three places to the left and you'd get 0 0.125 milligrams. And that would be your answer. So you would not round that uh, question. And then for this one, when you go from two and a half teaspoons, um, one teaspoon is five milliliters. So you would divide two and a half by five. And so you're gonna get a small number, right? Um, and it'd be helpful if I, oh, I do have a calculator. I'm sorry, you would multiply by five. That's, I am, I better write that out. I apparently need to wake up still. Post meal. Brain not working, guys. All right. So for this question where you have two and a half teaspoons, and we want to know how many milliliters that is, one teaspoon is five milliliters. So yeah, you would multiply. I don't know how you guys typically set up your problems. I'm just going to show you this via dimensional analysis. And then you really wouldn't need to round this answer, right? Because 2.5 times 5, and you're going to get, if I can get my calculator out, 12.5. And you would just leave, that would be your answer, 12 and a half milliliters. And if you're already getting that, and these are pretty straightforward, that's why I just wanted to ask. So. Um, the 196 pounds would be an answer that you would round. So when you have 196 pounds divided by the 2.2, you'll get 89.090909 repeating. And so for that question, you're going to want to round to the nearest tenth in your final answer. So you would round that to 89.1. The only time, and that's kilograms, so don't forget your units. The only time you would not do this kind of rounding when it comes to weight, uh, with weight, is when you're doing like pediatric type dosages. Um, and then, but that's, you have a, a specific class and you do specific drug calculations in that class in regards to um, pediatric dosages. All right, you had a question about replacement volume. Um, any, any troubles with that? Or do you know if you missed that question or any concerns with setting that up?
I know I didn't miss it. I've I've never seen a problem like that before, though. Okay. Okay. So um, uh, let's see here. So the question states, and then I'll just work it out that way you can kind of see. Um, so I guess I should have also added. Um, so some of you, unless you've watched some of my recordings on the YouTube channel, you um, you're, this is your first introduction to me, like doing these things. What I usually do is just kind of show you how to set these things up, and then I'll also ask, like, um, if you miss something, I'll ask how you set up that question, and then I'll show you where where you might be making a mistake, so I can help you kind of navigate that. So if there's something you know or remember setting up, or you just have no clue, that's helpful for me because then I can kind of show you how I would set it up. Um, I typically show dimensional analysis, um, but I can also show you ordered over have, ratio proportion, um, whatever you think you want to use. Um, uh, if you just let me know what you are trying to use, I will help you answer it the way you like to answer it. Because there's not one work right way obviously you want to get one right answer but there's not one right way to uh, get to that point so for number five on the urine output question it tells us that for every 150 milliliters of urine output we're going to replace it with 35 milliliters and we want to know what would the replacement volume be if um, we check after four hours that's 450 milliliters that have actually lost so with these urine um urine questions Usually how I set these up is I start with, um, I kind of created a formula for this. So this is where I deviate from traditional dimensional analysis. And I'll say, what was the actual output of urine over the theoretical output? Meaning like what for, ev for the basically the replacement volume output. And then you just multiply it by the replacement volume and that will give you your answer. So when I set this problem up, I'll take the 450 actual milliliters of output, I'll put that over the 150 milliliters of output, and then times the replacement volume of 35. Now, the only way that this question can, get, or this question can get tricky because they can change every single number. They can change the output, they can change the actual output, they can change the replacement volume, and they can even alter the wording of the question. But if you always take what was actually voided over what was the expected um, void times the replacement volume, you should, you're in good uh, shape for setting this up. When you do this um, calculation, 450 times 35 divided by 150, and you get 105 milliliters for your replacement volume. And hopefully that makes sense. If your initial replacement volume was 35 per 150, and we basically did three times 150, right? So 150 plus, or 150 plus 150 is 300, plus another 150 is 450. So you would expect that you're gonna get three times this volume. So that would be another way to solve this is to just, um, you know, how many times does this go into the actual output? And that will also give you your multiplier for um, solving these types of problems. Um, any concerns with like uh, calculating tablets? Like the, um, the next question, this, were there two questions for five? Anyways, um, it says a tenolol, 75 milligrams. Each tablet contains 0.05 grams. How many tablets will you prepare? Any questions on setting something like that? That's doing your ordered over have. Um, but if, if you're not sure about it, just let me know. Or if you're good, just give me a thumbs up or we're good or no. I'm okay with it. You guys are second semester, correct? Yes. Okay. And Natasha, I see your thumbs up. Thanks. I actually didn't know that was a thing. I, I was just kind of joking that uh, give me a thumbs up. I didn't know that. Was, 
um, actually on there. So, okay. Um, so let's get into the ones that were probably a little bit more challenging. Um, let's see here. All right, let's look at the syringe question here. So there's a syringe here, and again, it's, let's see if I can get a little bit closer and you can see it a little bit better. I don't think it's gonna get any better. But the syringe is, um, is in milliliters, it's a three milliliter syringe. And then you can see half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, and three. And then you have your tick marks in between. Um, if you're ever wondering like, are these you know, 0.2 or 0.1 milliliters, just count. So if you go here, you can see one, two, three, four, five. So 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So you know this is down to the point to the tenth of a milliliter. So that helps out when you're marking these syringes. Keep in mind this big line down here is your zero mark. And again, if I'm saying this to you and you're like, duh, I just want you to know that this is something that is commonly missed. It's just marking the syringe. So I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. So the syringe, or it says your ordered um, Demerol 80 milligrams um, containing from a vial containing 100 milligrams per milliliter. How many milliliters would you administer? And then to mark the syringe. So I'm going to do this, um, the ordered over halfway. 80 milligrams is the order. We have 100 milligrams and then our quantity is one. And so that gives me an answer of 0 0.8 milliliters. Now, when I mark that on this syringe, you know, I need to know that this is 0.5 and then this is 1.0. So from 1.0, I would just go back to 0.9 to 0.8 and make sure I put a line at 0.8 or I put a, um, uh, sometimes they say to circle it, sometimes they say to mark it, but right here is where 0.8 is located, 0 0.8 milliliters. Let's see if I can. So again, I apologize for the, I think if I get a little bit closer, maybe we can zoom in a little bit, but it just gets blurry as I pull it up, so sorry. Okay, um, so uh, I believe Professor Nanju mentioned that to, uh, that some of the questions that were missed were about mar marking syringes. Did anybody um, know if they missed marking the syringe? If so, what did you miss? Like, did you choose the wrong line or did you just forget to mark it? Or does it not apply to anybody that's here on the video? I know I... I think I was so nervous. I didn't didn't see that ours was a one ml syringe, so I just marked the wrong line. Okay, so you so you know where you messed up, and um and you'll and so uh, that that's part of the issue. A lot of times is you make that mistake and you're like crap, and then you and then you fix it the next time. So um okay. Whitney, did you have anything more to add? I saw you on. Um yeah, I was told I missed the. A TB syringe, but I don't. I don't think this one's it. Um, yeah, I missed the TB one too because I just saw that there was a zero at the end of the TB, and I was like really confused with that one. So I think it's like a different one. Okay, let me see. Yeah, I, I haven't seen my my exam yet. Um, uh, okay. I guess I'll see it tomorrow. One of the tutors said we're not allowed to look at our exam, so she didn't show me. So okay. yeah. Sorry about that. It's <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So you guys had like a tuberculosis um, syringe. Yeah, the only other syringe I have on here other than uh, insulin is like an, an MMR booster. Oh, yeah. So that's the tuberculin. There we go. Oh, OK. I see this syringe does look a little bit different. So. Um, all right. So maybe you guys can help me out. Okay, so these are not MLs, these the big numbers, the 16. I'm gonna see if I can get my camera to zoom in on this. Uh, 
But I think these numbers down here, are these MLs down here? This is a one ML syringe and that's 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, is that correct? Yeah, so yeah. it's supposed to be that 0 0.50. That's where it's okay. supposed to go. Okay, and then what were, what do you know what some of you did? Like, <laughs> yeah, you so it? I put it at the half. So I put it at like the 0 0.05. Okay, right here? Part. Yeah. Okay. That's what I did too. <laughs> yeah, because this kind of, you're, I see what you did wrong here because it looks like it's a 10. Yes. Um, when I get, I, I understand what you're saying. So, okay. Yeah. So that looks like a 10, but clear, there's definitely a 1.0 there. And so, and then look at those. Yeah, I, I agree with you. This is just a, uh, it was just hard to see it. So you were probably sweating in your eyes and, and flustered over the exam and just quickly went through it. And so, okay, you won't make that mistake again then. I think that was probably happened to a lot of you if you missed this question. So, sorry about that, guys. Are the, oh, I don't, you may not know. Are those trailing zeros on an actual TB syringe? Um, I don't know that. Yeah, it's a good question. Obviously, this is a um, uh, you know, a, a, an image that would be found like in a textbook or or even just online, and so. I think the point of that is showing you um, that it's there um, and then that you could go down into the uh, hundreds place with all these. So you can do 0 0.31, 0 0.32, 0 0.33 and on and on. So uh, that's a good question. I'm not entirely sure how it would actually look like if I would say if you wanted to know that to just do a Google search, uh, a Google image search for a tuberculin syringe, a one milliliter tuberculin syringe and just see what you find. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So now my my phone picked up on me saying do a Google search. <laughs> okay. Um, how'd you guys do on your flow rate questions? I know I did okay. The only confusing part is um, how it says on 23 electronic infusion pump. I guess we were, well, I guess that one says milliliters per hour, but um, other ones that didn't mention that. So I guess we were just supposed to know that it has to be milliliters per hour. Okay, that's a good question. So um, that's actually a very good question. So typically, now I know that there can be differences in what I'm about to tell you, but typically flow rates are gonna be one of two things. So flow rate is just a measurement of volume over time. And what it seems to be is, at least for nursing, that standard is milliliters or cc's per hour. The other flow rate you'll get is your drop rate which tends to be in drops per minute. And those are the two flow rates that I'm most um, familiar with and most likely you would most likely be dealing with. And whenever they say rate, they're talking about volume over time, milliliters per hour. I don't know, I don't even know if you can program into most infusion pumps, milliliters per minute or you know any other increments, I, I would assume it's either milliliters per hour and if they're on a uh, like uh, getting like a, a drip, that it would be the drops per minute. Um, so yeah, so you're saying like, if it didn't tell you milliliters per hour, how would you know that? Um, I'm assuming you're supposed to know that um, any of the flow rates like here. So this question here, 15, it tells you you administer 500 milligrams ampicillin in 100 milliliters by IV piggyback over a period of 20 minutes. How many milliliters per hour would you program into the infusion pump? So it even tells you in the question milliliters per hour. So I'm just looking to see if there's any. Yeah, for 16, calculate the flow rate in drops per minute. Um, so the flow rate is. Yeah, even some of these things are like this. This right here is written wrong. So this should actually be drops per minute not drops per milliliter. So some of this is, um, it, it asked the right question. It just gave the wrong um, thing in the in your answers here. Do you wanna, would it be helpful if I went through a few of these flow rate questions? It doesn't take long to go through them. 
Yeah, I think it'd be good to like just review. You got it. These are my favorite things to do, guys. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. So you have, um, let's just start with 15 here. On this, it says you are to minister 500 milligrams of ampicillin in 100 milliliters of IV piggyback over a period of 20 minutes. How many mil per hour would you program an infusion pump? So first and foremost, in order to calculate flow rate, I need two pieces of information. I need a volume, typically in milliliters, sometimes in cc's, and I need a time, okay? So I need both those pieces of information. Notice in this question, it says to administer 500 milligrams of ampicillin in 100 milliliters by IV piggyback. All this tells you is that that 500 milligrams of that antibiotic is in the 100 milliliter IV bag. I do not need to know anything about what drug is in the bag when I'm calculating flow rates. I just need to know how fast it's going into the patient, okay? So I always use the example, let's say we're, we're all leaving our home for, or we're all leaving North campus and we're going to drive to, I don't know what's close over there. Um, I'm sure you guys know where the Dairy Queen is on 19. So let's say we're gonna to go to the Dairy Queen. Um, the question isn't how you got there. The question is, you know, how long is it going to take you to get there based off of the speed you have to go like 35 miles per hour, stop, you know, traffic lights and all that kind of stuff. That's the question. It doesn't matter what you're driving, Honda, you know, Maserati, whatever you got, it doesn't matter. We only care about the volume and the time. So 100 milliliters, 20 minutes. Now, if it had asked you milliliters per minute, we'd be done, but it says to calculate milliliters per hour. So there's two ways to do this. You could do the, the dimensional analysis way, or you can just do it the using your noggin way. If in 20 minutes, 100 milliliters will go by, 40 minutes would be 200 milliliters, 60 minutes or one hour would then be what? 300 milliliters. Okay, so that'd be one way uh, to do that or 60 minutes, one hour. So this is the dimensional analysis way. I know the, way I, the reason I like to always use this and demonstrate this is because then I can cross out units. And I know before I do any math that I'm in the correct units. When I do that, I get 300 mil per hour. Now, as I go through and start doing these other ones, just stop me if at any point you want to see something or if you have a question or why I did something a certain way, just let me know. For 16, 16 says you have a liter or a thousand milliliters of Ringer's lactate IV in 10 hours. So there's your volume, there's your time. And then they calculate the flow rate in drops per minute if you have a drop factor of 20. Okay, so let's do that. So now I didn't tell you all the ins and outs about drop rates. Drop rates need two pieces of information. We need to know the flow rate. We need to know the drop factor. Those two pieces of information will give me the drop rate. So like in this previous question with the 500 milligrams ampicillin, it would have that same philosophy of it doesn't matter what car you're driving, we're all getting to, to Dairy Queen. It's the same thing here. Okay. So flow rate is going to be in volume over time. It will sometimes be in hours. It will sometimes be in minutes. If it's in minutes, great. That's exactly what we want. If it's in hours, then we need to convert that to minutes. Drop factor is always going to be drops per milliliter. And then your drop rate is always going to be drops per minute. So this question says we have a thousand milliliters over 10 hours. And then it says we have a drop factor of 20 drops per milliliter. 
and we want to know drops per minute. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can um, handle this question. I'll show you the way I think is the most straightforward, and then I'll show you some alternative ways that maybe make more sense. So one of the things I would do is I would just reduce 1,000 over 10, and I would do that just by dropping the zero. So it would be 100 milliliters per hour. Okay, one hour is how many minutes? 60 minutes times the 20 drops per milliliter. And then I would just multiply across, divide by 60, and get my answer. Or if you feel comfortable, just reduce 20 over 60 and then also get your answer. Um, the other way you can do that is you can just kind of take that 10 hours, and you know that there's 60 minutes in an hour, so 10 times 60, and that would give you 600 minutes. And then you can just do 1,000 over 60, or oh, 1,000 over 600. And that would be another way that you could set up this problem. But I already have this set up here. So let's do 100 times 20. And then divide that by 60. And I'm going to get 33.33. .33 uh repeating so let's put that here so drops per minute and so we want to round this now do you do you guys know do you have specific rounding rules that you follow for your drops they just said to make sure it's always a whole number good okay and that's exactly what i tell the allegheny students make sure it's a whole number um and so what I would do is I would just look at the 10th place and then just if it needs to uh, like this three isn't uh, is less than five. So you're not going to round this up. So this would just be 33 drops per minute. I do believe that if this had said 33.5 that you would round that up to 34, but I would confirm that with um, with your instructor just to make sure that that's what you're supposed to do. But anytime someone says rounding, um, there's typically a component of either leaving it at the same or rounding it up. In reality, when you're working in a hospital or clinical situation, you may not even be able to program 33 into the infusion pump. It might be a difference between either 30 or 35. But I always say when you're in the CCAC math bubble, when you're doing these things, sometimes the actual clinical applications will vary. All right, another question here. This question says that the patient is to receive 700 milliliters of normal saline over five hours. And what would you program the infusion pump to? Believe it or not, this is a commonly missed question. And the reason it's commonly missed is because many students are looking for more to do, meaning they're looking for what to multiply it by, what to you know convert it to, and that, that just doesn't exist. All you're gonna do is 700 divided by five, which gives you 140 milliliters per hour. And that's your answer. I've seen over the years that that is a commonly missed question. It's, I would say more often than not, that's a missed question, so. Yeah, I think I missed something like that. And, and that's, a, and so don't, don't, uh, uh, don't be embarrassed by that because like I said, it's commonly missed because so, so many students are like, well, what do I do with this? Okay, I guess I, I, I don't know, there's something missing. And you assume that maybe they did, forgot to put something into the question. And it's just that, it's just reduce. Okay. There's another question of pediatric order for the uh, D5LR, 1,000 milliliters over 10 hours and 60 drops per mil. So we already kind of did this question. It's 1,000 milliliters 
over 10 hours. And then it says this time it's a micro tubing of 60 drops per mil. So we already did this um, scenario in the previous page where we did 1000 milliliters over 10 hours and we reduced that. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna reduce 100 over one. So 100 milliliters, one hour, same thing as 100 milliliters, 60 minutes. And all I'm doing is just trying to save a step. Okay, and I'll, um, I'll show you the dimensional analysis way to do this question as well um, in just a second. But I'm just trying to show you how I do this stuff. 60 drops per milliliter. Um, we get rid of milliliters, we're left with drops per minute. These 60s will actually cancel out. And so your answer for this question is 100 drops per minute. Of course, all this stuff makes perfect sense when you're looking at it and, you know, uh, and someone's working it out for you, I know. Um, and uh, my, my hope is that I can at least give you some strategies on how to set some of these things up. Um, just so you guys know, this is like, I, I haven't reviewed this test previously. So this is all, um, I got it a couple hours ago. I printed it off and then this was the first chance I got to look at it. Um, so... I'm looking at it with fresh eyes, and that's why I'm trying to communicate as if it's the first time I've seen it. Now, some of these questions I've seen before, they might be different drugs, but um, they're they're common because they're the ones we use. So in the practice test that you have access to now, um, you could see the different semesters have similar questions, and so now you have some additional practice. Um, Oh, I said I would show you how to do this. So if I was doing this dimensional analysis wise, I would, if I was setting this up purely dimensional analysis, and that's just for those of you who are purist in dimensional analysis stuff and want to do it that way, you can still set this up as the drops per milliliter, but you need to do one other step. You need to convert hours to minutes. Okay. And then when you do that, you're still going to come up with the same answer because you can even see 10 times 60 will give you 600 or yeah, will give you 600. And then you could just reduce and you'll be left with 100 drops per minute, just like we had here. And if, again, if uh, everything I just said, and you said, I don't know how to reduce that sort of thing, just multiply across the top, divide by the numbers on the bottom and you'll get your answer. Um, how'd you guys do in this, uh, Heparin protocol. There's a lot of steps in here. Um, I didn't do good because I didn't have the MLs on my test. You mean so like I didn't the... have number two, that whole bottom part, like the, see how you, yeah, number two, that wasn't on my test. Oh, you mean like where it tells you? Yeah, like oh. that whole part was blank, so. Okay, yeah, you need that. <laughs> unless unless they're telling you to uh, memorize it. Um, but yeah, I guess to my knowledge, you need to know that. So, I right. mean, you need they, to be given that. They so. corrected it for everybody else after. Oh, okay. Well, sorry about that. That stinks. I don't know what to tell you. So, but um, yeah, uh, well, if it helps. At some point, when you practice these enough, um, this has always been the same. I've not found a heparin protocol that deviated from what's, what's written here. And notice that they actually took out some of the steps. Um, like there's actually, there's 10, there's 15 total steps and they actually took out steps six through nine, they are five through nine. They probably could have even taken out steps three and four um, and left you know, 10 there, but anyways. Um, on <clears throat> If you go on to the practice tests that I've created, I actually have four questions that I ask you. Two come from the initial, and then two come from doing an APTT. Um, and um, the other thing is when you do the, um, wh when you look at the practice tests, and then I've also uh, written these out on the YouTube channel as well. So if you want additional practice, but we'll go ahead and we'll go with the patient's weight here. Now I will say this, the only thing that can really be changed in this question is the patient's weight 
and then what the APTT is if they ask you that question. Now this one and this one doesn't ask you about the APTT, so we'll um, we'll go ahead and work this one out as it is, and then I'll show you how I would solve it and see if we all come up with the same answer. So, oh, new piece of paper. So for this question, um, it tells us we have a patient that weighs 143 pounds. Um, then it tells us we need to calculate how many ml to uh, bolus the patient with, and then to calculate the infusion rate to start the patient on. Um, the bolus says that it's we're going to start with 80 units kilo, per kilogram body weight, and then we're going to start them on the drop or the drip rate or the uh, infusion rate of 18 units per kilogram per hour. Um, and then what was missing on, I think that was Natasha was talking, uh, heparin, the 25,000 units and 250 ml, half normal saline. And then the bolus dosage strength is 1,000 units per milliliter. So I actually need all that information to answer this, but we're going to take it stepwise. So step one is we need to know what the patient's weight is in kilograms. So we're going to divide by 2.2. So 143 divided by 2.2 gives me 65 kilograms. Now this might vary, but I will say if you ever get a decimal answer, like let's say we use that initial um, question that we started off with uh, 196 pounds, and that was 89.090909 um, kilograms. I would, if it were me, I would round that to the nearest tenth right then and there. Um, I do believe that if you do your rounding at the end, it should still come out the same. Um, but if, uh, so I would always just say, just confirm what your instructor wants to do. But like when I've created keys for tests, I typically will um, round the kilograms uh, to the nearest tenth and then factor it into the problems themselves. All right, but this one, you don't need to worry about rounding. So step one says, or question says, what's a bolus in milliliters? Patient is 65 kilograms, and we're going to uh, multiply that by the 80 units per kilogram. Why am I doing that? Because the question tells me to bolus the patient with a heparin 80 units per kilogram, OK? So 65 times 80 gives me 5,200 units, and that's my bolus dose in units. Now, if it said how many units to administer, we'd be done, but it's not units, we wanna know milliliters. So I need to convert units to milliliters. I can do that because in my protocol, it tells me my bolus dose strength is the 1,000 units per milliliter. So the way I envision this, because I haven't actually seen this in you know, reality as far as how this is all set up, the 25,000 units and 250 milliliters half normal saline, that's the IV that's connected to the patient. And then when I wanna push a bolus dose, it's going into, a, um, into like a port or something into the side there, and you're pushing that bolus dose into the patient while, and then we're setting this infusion. I, I'm hoping that as you guys are in the nursing, you know, uh, in nursing school and this all everything I said, other than maybe the language being completely wrong is what you're envisioning as well. Or maybe you haven't seen this yet. So everyone's um, mileage varies as far as what uh, clinicals you've had so far. Anyways, 5200 units. There's a thousand units per milliliter. Okay. Now, this is again, I like to use this dimensional analysis because then I can show that I'm crossing things out and then I can get my final answer of 5.2 milliliters. And that's how you would answer the first question that said to calculate the number of milliliters to administer for the bolus. I don't know why I pull up the paper here. You guys can't see that. Okay. The next thing says to start an infusion at 18 units per kilogram per hour um, 
and then to uh, calculate that in milliliters per hour. So same patient. Now the 18 units kilogram hour. We know we've set it up right because kilograms are gone. We'll be left with units per hour. So 65 times 18 is 1,170 units per hour. We need to convert units per hour to milliliters per hour. So I need, I'm hopeful that I can find something that'll allow me to convert units to milliliters. Now, there are two things that will allow me to do that. I have my bolus dosage strength that goes units to milliliters, but I also have the heparin IV 25,000 units in 250 milliliters half normal saline. We wanna use this because this is what we're using for our infusions. The bolus dose is used only for bolus doses. So 25,000 units and then 250 ml half normal saline. And when I do that math, I will get 11.7 mil per hour. Now I'll give you, a little, I'll tell you a little trick. I've been doing this question a lot over the last couple of years. So I know that this ratio is one over a thousand. I know that this ratio here is one over 100. Okay, so that's why I did that so quickly, but you could still take that 1170 times 250 and then divide it by 25,000 and you'll still get the same answer, 11.7. Now, if there was another question and let's say it's the same patient, same weight, and let's say they had an APTT of 43 seconds, then you would look in the rest of the protocol here and just look at, okay, under 35 seconds, between 36 and 44, between 45 and 75, between 76 and 90, greater than 90 seconds, then you would just do what it says here. So I said 43 seconds, then you would rebolus with 40 units per kilogram, and then you would increase your rate by two units per kilogram per hour. So if the original was 18 units per kilogram per hour, if you increase it by two, now it's 20 units per kilogram per hour. So um, I worked a couple of those out on um, the YouTube channel already. Um, so I just, I'll, I'll just recommend that you just look at those to see, kind of see it. And every review session I do for every, um, for the third and fourth semesters at Allegheny County, they always have these heparin protocols. And so you can see me go over it pretty much uh, multiple times, sometimes the same way. And then I've also done individual videos of just the heparin protocol. Okay. All right, there's some more flow rate questions. I'll answer those or I'll go through those as well. Are there any questions from the heparin protocol though, before we move forward? No. No. Okay, all right, well, thank you. Okay. So there were, um, there's uh, two more flow rate questions here. Yeah, there's too many, uh, two more flow rate questions here. First one says um, you have cephalothin, 750 milligrams in 50 ml normal saline on an IV piggyback to infuse over 30 minutes. And then we want, uh, okay, so it says a drop factor electronic infusion pump. And then the, it says flow rate milliliters. So my guess is that we're supposed to calculate drops per minute for this question, since it says electronic infusion pump um, with the drop factor. Do you guys happen to know what the drop factor is for an electronic infusion pump? I think for that question, 
we're looking for just milliliters per hour because it's an electronic infusion pump. That's what I was told. I don't think there, I don't know if that's an actual drop factor. Okay. Like, do you mean like drops per um, milliliter or drops per minute? Is that what you're asking? Correct, yes. Yeah, I think that one was just milliliters per hour. I don't okay. know. Okay. Well, and that would make sense to me as well. I just wanted, I wanted to see if there was something, because I know there's something called micro tubing. Micro tubing is 60 drops per minute, whereas macro tubing, it can be 10, 15, or 20 drops per minute. And so you're probably right with what you said is that uh, we just need to use the, um, that we just, we're going to calculate milliliters per hour here. Um, it just wasn't clear. So that's why. I, I asked that question to you guys and to see what, um, how you tackled it. So, um, okay. So you're just, remember, we don't care what kind of car we're driving. So the 750 milligrams doesn't mean anything. We just care about how fast we're gonna get there, volume over time. So 50 milliliters over 30 minutes. And I'm just showing you the dimensional analysis this way, and then you'll get um, 100 mil per hour. The next question here is another uh, heparin question that's converting units per hour to milliliters per hour. It says that you have 25,000 units of heparin in 500 milliliters D5W to infuse at 800 units per hour. What would be uh, at what rate would the electron fusion pump be set? So yeah, it looks like it's like you were saying it's the um, milliliters per hour is what you're saying. Um, this is just a little the wording here is just a little bit confusing. So um, just letting you know that I was also confused um, with that wording. Um, milliliters per hour. We know that. Um, so my the way I do this is I'm going to set this up the same way that I did your, um, in your heparin protocol. Notice here, we went from units per hour to milliliters per hour. So I'm gonna set it up the same way. I'm gonna start with the units per hour that they give me, which is 800. Okay. And then uh, we're going to get, we need to get rid of units and we need to convert units to milliliters. And that's where we can look at the order saying 25,000 units and then 500 milliliters. Now I do feel that sometimes when you guys um, uh, try and do some of these problems, you try to do like ordered over half. And so that stuff doesn't work as easily um, with flow rate type questions or converting units per hour to milliliters per hour. I do feel that it's more um, helpful and you're less likely to um, put things in the wrong place if you follow either dimensional analysis or even just follow what I'm doing. I start with units per hour and then I just convert units to milliliters and then I know I'll be left with milliliters per hour because I can eliminate the units, units. And I did say that twice on purpose. All right, so I'm gonna take the 800 times the 500, and then I'm gonna divide by 25,000, and that'll give me 16 mil per hour. So those are the flow rate questions. You guys have any other questions from um, or anything that you'd like to see or were there any reconstitution questions on the practice test you have? I'm looking, hold on. Mm. 
No. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, and so um, sometimes you will see those questions on this looking here. Give me one second. I can actually show you another type of reconstitution that might be helpful. Hold on. Okay, so I'm just pulling up um, another practice test that I have here that has, it's a Pfizer pen question. This is a reconstitution type of question. I'm going to try and bring that up a little bit. Yeah, it's starting to come into focus there a little bit. So it says the order is 350,000 units every six hours, and then use the information below, choose the strongest concentration, how many mil would you administer? And notice that there's two columns there. There's a milliliters diluent added, and then there's a units per milliliter solution. Um, so the trick to this type of question is this milliliters of diluent added, you can ignore because this is what the pharmacy does when they add deionized water to the powder to get to these concentrations. So in order to solve this problem, I just need to know my units per milliliter. So my, I'm basically just looking at the label for determining what my have is, okay? So if it tells me to choose the strongest concentration, that would be 1 million units per milliliter. And I would just take my 350,000 divided by a million and that would be that's the that's the best example I have for a reconstitution question. Um, I don't know if you've had more challenging ones than that or uh, different ones than that, but I don't have any other examples other than that one. Okay, no problem. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any other questions? I don't think I had any reconstitution problem on the exam I took. So would it be on the one we're taking Monday? I'm know? not. That's a good question. I'm not anticipating that because um, I was told that your your test should look similar to what you had, and then I don't uh, see that as like on your questions. It says. You have household conversions, metric conversions, intake and output, simple one step dosage calc problems, IV calculations for drip rate, drip factor, and electronic infusion pump milliliters per hour. Then you have heparin and then insulin administration and syringe questions. So I don't see that, um, that there's an additional, uh, I don't even see reconstitution listed in that list of questions there. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I wanted to wait until everybody was done because I came on late. Okay. And I wanted to know, I believe it was number 21, the big heparin mm -hmm. question, which you probably already went over. Um, you're recording this, so I didn't know if you were going to post it, and I can just always watch it later, or if you want to go over it again, since you already have it written. Sure. No, I don't mind going through it again. Um, and then, yeah, it is recorded, and then it's still being recorded. And then um, I will post Connie here in the um, in the chat, and so you can see there's a link here for some practice tests that I've created for the Allegheny campus students as well as a link to my YouTube channel. If you haven't been there already, this is where this recording will be posted, so. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So um, the, uh, for lack of a better term, the trick for the heparin protocol 
is just a just realizing that all this stuff that's like listed here is all part of this thing referred to as the protocol and the protocol just tells you what to do with everything so it tells us you know to bolus the patient it tells us to start a heparin drip uh, at 18 units per kilogram per hour it gives us the patient's or the patient's weight will vary and that's how this question will also vary so we would just change the patient's weight um then uh we're going to answer some questions about the um heparin protocol by saying things like um, calculate the number of milliliters for the bolus and calculate the infusion rate in milliliters per hour um, that we would program in. Then there's the additional thing is they could ask questions about the after six hours, they recheck the APTT, and then you would see a time associated with that, and then you would just do whatever it says in the second, um, in, the, in the box here. So if it says to rebolus, increase the rate, decrease the rate, you just follow what it says to do here. And then if you go on the YouTube channel, I've worked through a bunch of these variations with the um, 40 units per kilogram and the two units per kilogram per hour increase. Um, and then I, I'll, re I'll go through this question again and I'll just do it fresh. And then that way um, you get the benefit of seeing it again. Uh, in fact, um, what I'm gonna do is, so this was, this was the um, 143 pound patient and so we have the different weight or the same patient weight. This first steps here, I took 65 times 80 to get my um, uh, bolus dose in units. And then I converted um, units to milliliters. And I got that conversion by looking at step two of the protocol where it tells me the bolus dosage strength is 1000 units per milliliter. And I know you can't see this paper, um, but that's why I've been trying to write everything out in the marker and everything that shows up a little bit better. When I calculate the heparin or the uh, the drip, the IV drip rate, it tells me 18 units per kilogram per hour. So I multiply by the patient's weight. I got it into units per hour, then converted it to milliliters per hour. And then where I got the 25,000 units, 250 ml, that also came from the heparin protocol which stated 25,000 units of heparin in 250 milliliters half normal saline. So that's where all that information comes from. So what I'm gonna do here, um, for those of you that are kind of sticking around, I'm just gonna do a different patient weight and we'll see what we get. So I'm gonna try, um, let's just say 178 pounds. So the first thing I want to do is convert that to kilograms. So 178 divided by 2.2, it gives me 80.909090 repeating. So all I'm going to do is just round that to 80. Point nine. Notice I didn't round that up to 81. I, I kept it to the nearest 10. Okay. So now I have 80.9 kilograms. So step one, it's, or the first question is calculate the bolus. And we have to do so by multiplying by the initial bolus, which is the 80 units per kilogram. If it helps you out, it's always 80 units per kilogram. I've not seen the heparin protocol written any other way. So that's how it seems to start every single time. So 80.9 times 80. Gives me 6,472 units. I just want to see something real quick. Yeah, so let's say you didn't round. This would still be 6472.727272272 repeating. Um, so just keep that in mind. And then that's your bolus there? 
well, this is your bolus in units. Now we need to convert units to milliliters. And what I'm gonna do here is it tells me that the bolus dose strength is 1000 units per milliliter. So since I'm calculating the bolus, that's what I was gonna do. I'm gonna take the thousand units and then multiply that 6472 divided by 1000. And you're gonna get 6.47 two milliliters. And we're gonna round that to the nearest tenth. So this would actually be 6.5 milliliters is what you're going to administer heparin wise. Now for the um, calculating the heparin drip, because it tells us to do 18 units per kilogram per hour, I'm gonna take the same patient, same weight, and you're gonna have 18 units kilogram per hour. 80.9 times 18 equals 1,456.2 units per hour. I don't want units per hour, I want milliliters per hour. So again, I'm gonna go into my protocol and it tells me heparin 25,000 units in 250 ml half normal saline. So I'm using this and I use this example um, earlier in the recording. I said, you know, here's your patient, they're in bed, they're connected to an IV, the IV has the 25,000 units of heparin with the um, in 250 milliliter half normal saline. And then there's like a port that you're gonna put the um, bolus into as needed. So your bolus dosage to so your bolus dosages, you wanna use the 1,000 units per milliliter. Your IV, you wanna use what's uh, available in your uh, 250 ml half normal saline. And that helps us to differentiate what goes where when we're doing these different calculations. So 250 um, or the 1456.2 times 250 divided by 25,000 will give me 14.562. And then again, you would round this to the nearest tenth and that would be 14.6 mil. That's per hour, sorry, I didn't say per hour. So this is just another example, um, just using a different patient's weight, but solving the same heparin protocol question. And again, there, I've solved the heparin protocol a number of different times on my YouTube channel, I just uh, recommend that you go ahead and check it out there and see um, other examples. And then if, um, um, if you wanna try different weights, your weight, friend's weight, parent's weight, uh, significant other's weight, what, whoever's weight you wanna use a fictional weight um, and then just plug it in. And then if you wanna make sure or double check your answers, you can always send them to me and I can um, let you know if you got that right or not. And I'll put my email in the, uh, chat as well. Just in case you need it. Okay, are there any other questions? Anything you want to see worked out? Um, we pretty much, because um, Connie, like you said, you came in a little bit late. Um, there, uh, I, we went through all the flow rate questions that were on uh, this this practice test here or this mock test, um, and then um, talked about marking the syringe. We talked about, I guess, there was an issue with the tuberculin syringe that it was one a one milliliter syringe, not a ten milliliter syringe, and I think some people may have missed 
just because of the thinking it was a, a 10 milliliter, not a one milliliter. So. Yeah, the other ones, which I think that I'm good on now, the ones that I missed were, I was confused about the electronic pump. Okay, yeah. And I was a little bit confused about that as well, um, just because the way it was worded, I wasn't quite sure um, what they were looking for. So like it said, the drop factor for an electronic infusion pump, and then the flow rate, I was looking for the drop factor, but I think this is just extra information. And they were just looking for, um, and I can't remember, it was either Whitney or Natasha straightened me out. It was, they're just looking for milliliters per hour um, in this question. Oh, okay. That, yeah, that wasn't explained to me. So I'm glad you just brought that up because the way it was explained to me is if they're saying drop factor, that you need to do it one way. But if they're saying something else, you need to do it another way. Mm -hmm. so, so like flow rate as opposed to drip factor. Okay. Well, in order to, well, drop factor is just tells you what the tubing um, how many drops per milliliter the tubing allows. So if it's micro tubing, it's 60 drops per milliliter. If it's macro tubing, it could be 10, 15, or 20 um, drops per milliliter. So there's different drop factors. That's why and this didn't say specifically micro tubing. I just think the way this is worded might be a little bit uh, misleading. I don't know if it's just to make you think um, but it, this didn't help either when it just said flow rate milliliters. <laughs> it yeah. should have said either flow rate milliliters per hour, or if they wanted you to calculate the drop rate, you would need to know what the drop factor was. You can't just guess. You need to know yeah. what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know if they were looking for milliliters per hour or milliliters per, per minute. Like I had no idea. Oh, okay. So I actually addressed that earlier. Um, now, this is at least at the Allegheny campus, this has been consistent. But when you're doing flow rates, hold on. When you're doing flow rates, typically it's volume, it, it is volume over time. And then in nursing, it tends to be milliliters per hour or drops per minute. So you usually don't see milliliters per minute, just like you don't see drops per hour. So my um, guess is that it's typically milliliters per hour. Yeah, that's what I was saying. That That is how they explained it to me, that if it's a flow rate, it's always milliliters per hour. And if it's a drop rate, then it's always drops per minute. Okay. Now we'll say there's some ambiguity with that because when you look at, it tells you um, in the heparin protocol, it tells you and start drip at 18 units per kilogram per hour, but you're looking for, you're not looking for the drip rate, you're looking for the infusion rate, which is in milliliters per hour. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't even see that even if I, even if you can. You're looking at the infusion rate in milliliters per hour. Even though it says the word drip, it has nothing to do with the actual drop rate. Although you probably could convert milliliters to hour to drops per minute from once you got the, um, the actual flow rate here. So um, yeah, so I would just say, just do your best to pay attention to what they're asking for. And most of the times the question will say, what is the rate in milliliters per hour? And if it is a drop rate question, typically you will see drops per milliliter listed. Okay. Yeah. All right, any other questions about the test, about um, how to work some of these problems? I know you, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, I think I'm okay um, with everything. I, I, I miss um, simple stuff on the exam, so I think I'm okay now. Okay, and what I would recommend, Whitney, is just practice, practice, practice to the point where you, you're not gonna make those silly mistakes you know, when you retake it. Obviously you don't wanna um, 
you have to pass this. So you want to make sure that you just practice it. And if something comes up and you get hung up on a question, if you do some of these practice questions that I've shared with you, um, just email me and I'll, um, I'll try and help you out as best I can. Okay, I will, thank you. You're welcome. And you said this is gonna be posted on your YouTube channel? Correct, yes. So I, I posted that link in the chat. Did you get it? I did, I already pulled it up. Okay, but cool. My other question is I pulled up the other thing to the practice test. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot list, I don't wanna say a lot, but there's some listed here. Um, should we look for the NUR 220 230 practice test? Because there's yes. some, you know, early dates, but I just want to make sure I'm going to look at the right one. There's yeah. So, yeah, I would like, I think I made, um, well, there's one's in Word document, one's a PDF. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And so they're both the same. So, oh, okay. um, yeah. So, just uh, whichever one is more convenient for you to open, just use that one. Um, but yeah, the 220-230 test is the one that you want to look at. You can look, there's actually some practice questions that I made for um, 240 that is, um, that might be helpful for you guys as well. So if you want to yeah. check that out, um, that's perfectly fine too. Because a lot of the 240 questions are very similar to the 230 questions. Okay. And the practice test that you have listed in there, I didn't open it up yet, but is it, very similar to this test, like the questions on this test that we just took by chance? Yeah, there's like a few things that are different. Like um, uh, I didn't have any fluid intake um, questions, like the one that uh, yeah. you have a question here about like how many ounces. So you're gonna convert ounces to milliliters and then calculate that total. I don't mm -hmm. have any questions like that. Um, and then there is heparin protocol questions, different weights. We do have um, the insulin syringe. So, you know, the draw, the regular first, and then mark your total and all that stuff. I don't even know, does this tell you to mark the syringe? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then um, let's see here. Some of your syringes are just a little bit different than like what I've had, like these little, um, the three mil syringes and things like that. We have two Bexes, so that, that'll give you some practice with those. Um, these are better syringes, I think anyways, graphic wise. No, I'd say they're, they're similar. The questions are just maybe formatted a little bit differently. Um, okay, perfect. I don't, I don't think there's anything that's completely off base, so. Okay. Thank you for doing this today. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. I'm happy to help. I know you guys are probably exhausted from finishing up your clinicals, what, like a couple hours ago. So, but uh, yeah, Professor Nanju asked me to help you guys out. And I was, uh, you know, glad I could make it work out for you guys. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, sorry, it's Friday night. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. That's okay. Thank you. Thank yep. you. Yep. You're welcome. Uh, yep. Good luck on your test on Monday. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome.